Early ticket sales are not looking too good for the Marvels right now with the early projections saying it's going to make 72% worse than what Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania made. Also, you can combine that with the fact that Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumanium was around $50 million less to make than the Marvels. So yeah, like I said, this isn't looking too good for them. And it also gets worse because right now there's this article coming out from Variety kind of talking about some of the inner workings behind the scenes over at Marvel and Marvel Studios. And in that, it said basically the director of the Marvels, Nia DaCosta, kind of jumped ship in the post-production phase of this and is basically working on another movie, almost abandoning her project right in here which isn't a good look for it, but there's this article from Collider kind of talking about it, almost offering some pushback and trying to give some more context. But I read through this and it doesn't seem like the context that they're adding really does help things. So the headline from Collider, the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, did not leave during post-production. And if you scroll down to the article, this is what it said. The studio is fighting an uphill battle on several fronts with struggles all around, including the rumor the Marvel's director, Nia DaCosta, was not involved in the post-production. We have heard this report is not true, and she was very much involved in the editing process while based in London. Now, you see what they did there? This isn't necessarily the same argument. It says or they were being accused of not being involved in the post-production process when she was there for the editing process. Keep in mind, there's a lot of other aspects of a movie, especially one of this scale that involved in the post-production phase of this, other than just editing. Usually that's the first phase, and then you start dealing with the music, sound mixing, VFX shots. I mean, she's not the one actually doing the work on those things, but she is the one who signs off on it. But apparently she left early before all that stuff was even done, uh, which means, I mean, at least in my mind, that is her abandoning the project. And especially when she said that she wants to, um, or she laments the idea that the actors can't promote the movie because the strikes are going on. And right now it's about a week away from being released. And you would think this is a time with the actors can't actually, uh, promote the movie that the director would actually be the one doing that but no she's busy doing her own thing or working on her next movie i think she's probably going to be given some interviews on this or we'll talk about this in some way shape or form but you would think this is the time where she's like kind of like trumpeting the uh movie when it's coming out and just focusing her attention on that but no, I mean, she's almost like she has better things to do right now. And this kind of seemed to be par for the course when it comes to Marvel directors, or at least Marvel directors of lately, because you got this right here. Uh, uh, though DaCosta holds a significant title for the Marvels, her apparent leave from the feature is reminiscent of Eternals writer-director Chloe Zhao's reported experience with Marvel, and a reminder that ultimately Marvel movies are more Kevin Feige's, or no, more Feige's, that's so Kevin Feige's, than anyone else's. Though Zhao remained uh, with the project, she repeatedly or reportedly wasn't able to edit it in the way she initially hoped. Furthermore, in previous interview, DaCosta acknowledged that she would lose some creative control when it comes to the Marvels, although she wouldn't let that overshadow her own vision of for the feature. So this is something that we've heard coming out of Marvel a lot. I mean, not only recently, but pretty much uh, for years now when it comes to a lot. I mean, even like back in the days of the first Avengers movie, Joss Whedon apparently would but heads with Kevin Feige in the studio over some of the creative decisions, but he was more of an established director. In fact, a lot of the directors early on in the early phase of the MCU were established directors with track records in the industry. And I mean, I think Favreau was, um, I mean, he didn't have like a huge track record when it came to effects movies like this. He did a couple effects movies, I think before, uh, the first Iron Man movie, but I mean, he was in the industry for quite some time before he actually made Iron Man. And I think what happened at some time between then and now is the studio got tired of button heads with directors and you're like, you know what, let's just bring on people that we know we can control. I mean, you look at Nia DaCosta's IMDb page right now underneath her directing credits. I mean, Marvel's is the next one that she's doing. And before that, look what you have Candyman and Little Woods. Those are two features. Uh, she directed a couple shorts that has listed here and then a couple episodes of a TV show and that's pretty much it. I mean, and this is someone I think what happens is, like I said, the studio doesn't like to fight the directors for creative control. So what they do is they find someone that's like, they're, they're talented enough to do what they need them to do. It's like, okay, because we heard this with Chloe Zhao when it came to uh, the Eternals, where they're telling her, you don't have to worry about the action stuff or the VFX things or whatever. We got that handled at the studio because we got this on an assembly line. We know what we're doing. You can just kind of direct a lot of the performance aspects of it. The one that like most directors, they learn how to do that stuff. So even if your experience is more indie movies and things like that and low budget, it's the same thing, but just with 
more crew involved like that so it's something that they can handle and the studio themselves like kevin feige are the ones who handle all the big uh basically comic book aspects of the film sort of thing i mean and even then for the most part most of the editing process of it i mean at least according to what they're saying with in this one too so they're like yeah hey new director we just need someone to direct this movie for us uh you seem to be good enough so if you do this we'll give you a lot of money you get a lot of notoriety from this and then you can just go on and do whatever project you want to do afterwards i mean you don't even have to care about this for the most part and it seems like that's what nia da costa did i mean she's kind of just punched in did the bare minimum okay the editing's done uh, can i go now yeah you can go okay peace out i'm gonna go work on my next movie which i mean if that's what she wants to do that's fine i mean if this is just a, used as a stepping stone for her career i mean I have no problem with that, but it doesn't look like a, it's very good for the movie as a whole. And it doesn't have a promising prospects of it. Cause like I said earlier, she could be promoting this movie if it was something that she really cared about. And if it was something she truly cared about, I think she would be trying to do that and trying to get everyone out to see it. I mean, I know I personally would, but no, it's just a career move for her. Just, it's just a job, just a paycheck. And that's it. And that's kind of the stuff that they don't like being, going around about this movie prior to release it i mean because i mean just look at these numbers right here 50 to 75 million dollars opening weekend those are atrocious numbers for a movie that costs 250 to 300 million dollars in order to make so this is going to be another huge bomb for marvel and until they start going back to what they did in the early phase of marvel where they brought in talented directors and writers and actually let them have some creative say in the process. We're just going to see more of this because even if Kevin Feige is competent at handling the MCU, which I don't see think he really is, he's still not a creative. Uh, I mean, he's not an artist like these directors and writers are. And I think they should like basically let the artist do their thing. And then he just kind of steps back and just writes some checks as they need it. But let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Uh, do you feel Nia da Costa basically jumped ship or do you think like, yeah, her work is done. So she's free to go. I'm curious what people have to say. And if you like this video, make sure you click that like button, share the video and subscribe to the channel. If you want to stay up to date with the latest news. Thank you.